Well, I got involved in equine reproduction in about 1996. I bought my first stallion and it was a very popular cutting stallion. And uh, from there, I went to breeding a lot of mares and it got me really interested in uh, equine reproduction. And I started a herd of mares in early 2000s. It was as large as 24, 2,500 head of mares. We leased mares all over the country to um, all over uh, every kind of reproductive place doing embryo transfer ICSI. And then in about 2007, um, we were doing some trials here and I got a mule pregnant with a quarter horse and, and that got um, the Viagem company, the cloning company, to um, contact me. They were having trouble with cloning. And so myself and my partner, Dr. Vinniclausen, went down and, and uh, helped them with their problems uh, with the cloning. And since then, we've cloned about 300 horses uh, with them and I've cloned uh, deer, cats, uh, goats, pigs, uh, and they're working on dogs now. And then of course the WT deal, we cloned the, the yield grade one prime uh, cattle for West Texas A&M. So why, why would you clone anything? The reason you'd clone is to preserve the genetics, okay? So you don't need to clone a stallion if you got a whole tank full of semen frozen, right? So, but, but on the mare side, we've got such as great, we got great mares, and, and, and in every group, whether it's a cow or mare or a doe, there's these what you call, we call them blue hens. They are just producers. It doesn't matter what you breed them to, they're gonna produce. And so you get these great mares, and once they die, it's a done deal. It, you, there's, no, there's no preserving that DNA. So by being able to clone, we can preserve that DNA and continue to reproduce it. Understand that they're not the latest and greatest. They're still great. And you can still breed them to the latest and greatest. Like in the horse world, the latest and greatest right now all have herda. So you got these, this herda, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible genetic disease where the skin falls off of them. So now you can take these great horses and take these great, the latest and greatest and produce a herda free horse. So in other words, we're going down this path in almost every path you go down on whether it be cow, deer, horses. It used to be a 10 lane highway. It's a two lane highway now. We just keep breeding the same, same, same. Well, with cloning, we can back up and make another lane or two. When we, when we run into a problem, you can back out of that problem using the technology of cloning and we can make a whole nother path. And for instance, with the WT deal, this carcass, this steer was a great steer. Your grade one prime, I can't remember, 18 inch rear body, it was just off the charts kind of carcass. Well, he's dead, it's done. Even though that, he was a steer, he's done. His genetics, you know, once you castrate him, his genetics were done. Well, we were able to take that carcass and clone him, and this time leave him as a bull. So we created a whole new uh, line. And then also, the same way with these uh, heifers. The heifers, the genetics were lost as soon as they're killed. And we see what a great carcass there was. And so we take those and clone it and produce these heifers. Well, then we take these two clones and breed them and say, you know, because we want to know, is this an inheritable trait? Is yield grade one prime an inheritable trait? And what we've proven with the carcasses is, yes, it is. And Dr. Lawrence will be here at the conference explaining all that, how, how amazing it is. The most important thing is, it lets you take the great genetics that you believe are great genetics and back out of a situation with, with whether it be a, you know, a herd situation or a HYPP situation and take another path. So you back out, take another path, and now you've created a whole new tree that is free of genetic diseases. Identical twins happen in every species. And that's all that a clone is. All we do is we take the DNA from the existing animal and we produce, use that DNA and produce another embryo with that DNA. And we, that's how we make an identical twin. It's just separated by time. Science to this day amazes me. I mean, I watch every, every science thing I can get my eyes on, hands on, anything that touches me, I, it just, it's, it's just amazing. But, but when I got into the science of the reproduction, that's where I've really said, this is really neat. Uh, April 26th, we'll be having the Beef Council out here. There'll be a few things we'll be talking about is the ranch, of course, and then I'll be talking about cloning and also the WT uh, project. 
And then after that, Luke and I will be just demonstrating some cutting horses that are actually produced. Some of them are clones, most of them are produced by clones. And we'll just be talking about, you know, how we train our cutting horses, why cloning is so valuable, how you, you know, why preserving the genetics and, and avoiding these genetic diseases and all that stuff is all going to be wrapped into one while we're working our two-year-olds and our three-year-olds on cattle.